Hi guys. Andrea has done a marvellous job at compiling the writings of Yahweh and this is the bulk of it, but I'm going to be reading to you what Yahweh uploaded on April the 13th in the year 2001. A true history of the world. And of course, uh, there's been even more revelation from the time of this writing that I'll point out to you towards the end of these few pages. Because uh, we now know that the great big lie of course, the lie of the Holocaust, the Jews behind it. Okay, the true history of the world, and uh, it was written by the Lord Jesus Christ, 3168. Date posted, April 13th, 2001, at 5.15 a.m., and his email at that time was lordjesus at intojesus.com. And it just opens with, where are you from? country, state, I uh, wrote it, message, history, and the truth of it depends on the ruling elite. Whoever controls the media wins. If you want proof, is, if you want proof Jesus is back, or coming back, or was the son of God, God in the flesh, ask a Jew, and then reverse it. He says, I will begin then as follows. I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, I swear by Almighty God that I will tell you the truth, and what I reveal has been researched with an open and just mind. What I tell you in this website, I would tell the precise same thing to my children. In my lifetime, I have seen ghosts and experienced visions, faced death many times, and each time the hand of God has intervened. By coincidence or serendipity, I have been manoeuvred through life to be in precise locations, and later would be led to obtain the tools to verify my existence to have been preordained. This site, this site has a great deal of information that is not speculation and you can rely on what I tell you as being the absolute truth. And to confirm it, I have openly invited any evil nation or group to put a bullet in my head and end any possibility what I am saying is true, for my truth is confirmed with my immortality. Jesus promised that he would return and that he would bring to the world everlasting life, starting with 144,000 Jews. Now, to the Jews today are not the Jews who he was referring to, as they are an abomination to the Lord and are Antichrist and represent the devil in human form. Do I mention the word Jesuit then? No, this was 2001, so oh. it's 144,000 Jesuits. This is part of the correction. Twelve years ago. Mm. Yes. Twelve is actually representative of the government of God. Mm. So, the Jews today are not the Jews who is referring to as they are an abomination to the Lord and are antichrist and represent the devil in human form. As the devil, if it were a thing you could touch and talk to in a human form, would say all of the things the Jews say as a whole. I know for certain that most Jews are victims of the powers above them and sadly are set upon from all sides because of this fact. The elders or Zion are above the decent everyday God-fearing Jew that are fooled by their own leaders and who if they knew the truth of Jesus would be his most ardent followers. The devil is the elders of Zion. This is a secret which has not been revealed. They are the hidden hand. They are not the board of deputies, the Jewish parliament in England, or the universal Israelite alliance which sits in Paris. But the late Walter Rathenau of the El Gemina Ele yeah, right. <laughs> Guess or shaft, <laughs> Andrew would be able to pronounce that, has thrown a little light on the subject and doubtless he was in possession of their names, being in all likelihood one of the chief leaders himself, writing in the Wiener Free Press, December 24, 1912, he said, 300 men, each of whom knows all the others, govern the fate of all the European continent and they elect their successors. 
successes from their entourage. In the year 1844, on the eve of the Jewish Revolution of 1848, Benjamin Disraeli, whose real name was Israel, and who was a damped or a baptized Jew, published his novel, Coningsby, in which occurs this ominous passage. The world is governed by very different personages from what it is imagined by those who are not behind the scenes. And he went on to show that these personages were all Jews. The Jewish religion, as it is today, traces its descent without a break through all the countries from the Pharisees. Their leading ideas and methods found expression in a literature of enormous extent, of which a very great deal is still in existence. The Talmud is the largest and most important single member of that literature, and the study of it is essential for any understanding of Phariasism. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil, that's John 8, 44. The devil in human form can be read about at the following sites, and there's listed about one dozen um, sites on the net. Many, well, probably now, they'd be probably taken, down. taken down. Now the Jews state in Protocol 15 the following secret societies. Point number four, meantime, however, until we come into our kingdom, we shall act in the contrary way. We shall create and multiply free Masonic lodges in all the countries of the world, absorb into them all who may become or who are prominent in public activity. For these lodges, we shall find our principal intelligence office and means of influence. All these lodges we shall bring under one central administration known to us alone and to all others absolutely unknown, which will be composed of our learned elders. The largest will have their representatives who will serve to screen the above-mentioned administration of masonry and from whom will issue the watchword and program. In these lodges we shall tie together the knot which binds together all revolutionary and liberal elements. Their composition will be made up of all strata of society. The most secret political plots will be known to us and fall under our guiding hands on the very day of their conception. Yep. Among the members of these lodges will be almost all the agents of international and national police. Punished with death, those of them which are now in existence are known to serve us, to us, serve us and have served us we shall disband and send into exile to continents far removed from Europe. In this way we shall proceed with those Goy Masons who know too much. And the Russian government. Such was until recent times the Russian autocracy, the one and only serious foe we had in the world without counting the papacy. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like papacy. to... 1.2 billion people. I would like to say right here, so this was written in 1912, how they have set out to overcome the papacy and control it because outside of that time, the Russian government, their biggest foe was the papacy. Freemasonry. If you believe the Apostle Paul was sent by Jesus, you have been fooled by the same devil who blackmailed the Catholic Church into handing the scholarly work of deciphering the Dead Sea Scrolls into handing control to Israel. In the Seven Day War in 1967, the Jews took East Jerusalem from Jordan, headed straight to the building which housed the scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls reveal Paul to be an agent condemned by the followers of Jesus and identifies Jesus as being an Essene and the teacher of righteousness. The Vatican knew that Paul was the liar named by the Essenes and the evil priest. If it became known that Christianity was started by the evil priest, a Pharisee of the same sect modern Jews descend from, then it would destroy Christianity. They, the Jews, announced that the release of the scrolls had to be put back until 1999 as the translations were incorrect. I should have that John Strugnall, one of the uh, greatest uh, scholars there, made a statement which appeared in the Israeli newspaper 
And he said that uh, Judaism was a nasty little religion and should have died out 2,000 years ago with Jesus. <laughs> it's the greatest color of all time. And I ran off. And then they said he was a drunk and he didn't know what he was talking about and he'd gone mad. <laughs> I'd love to do that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As I continue. So, so you you reckon you want one, right? Well, no, I've had my coconut water and it starts the um, digestive juices going, so I start to feel hungry and think. I, I don't worry about it, I just. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's all good. <laughs> Hydrating. All right, so what have we got? We've got the Jews controlling the translation. We've got the Jews controlling the scrolls. Okay. We've got the Jews controlling the scrolls. So this is, this, is all, this is all such a ripping yarn. Now we're reading what was written in history. 12 years ago, almost a 12 year anniversary, and uh, it's all done in Zasti because of two humble men, men of righteousness. Okay, so going right along, Paul was their agent. So Paul was the agent of the Jews, the Pharisees, and had to be covertly allowed to remain secret, and yet they could not identify Jesus as they regard Jesus as the devil, a switch in roles. Let us now see why. Jesus was an essay. His followers knew him as the teacher of righteousness. The Dead Sea Scrolls are in fact a scholarly time bomb discovered just after the Jews took Palestine after World War II. Today the Antichrist has... So it was all set up uh, by the Balfour Agreement between Lord Balfour, a Jew, and Rothschild, uh, Rothschild a Jew, on the 2nd of uh, November 1917, giving the uh, area of Palestine, which was then held by the... Uh, uh, who was that held by? The Ottoman Empire, which of course was Turkey. Right? And uh, they were handing it over to Israel, which didn't they didn't own it. The British didn't own it, but they were going in to take it. And it's really, well, they, they conned Hitler by these massacres that was happening to the Germans in uh, Poland. Poland. And they had an agreement with Poland. Of course, Hitler didn't know that. Mm. He said, you democracy should go in there and stop what's going on, these atrocities. So well, Hitler went in. Mm. And then they declared war on Hitler. Yeah. So he was set up. He was a righteous man. The most evil man, I suppose, behind Stalin was uh, Winston Churchill. Who is the... Uh... So, in other words, uh, Hitler won the war. He did. Thank you. <laughs> to a German... It took a little while to settle in. Pontiff Emeritus, our lovely Benedict XVI, the Sweet Sixteen, and our valiant Saint Andrea, Anna. Anna, Andrea Anna, whose work this is, she has compiled this and uh, further research. I'm reading the English because a lot of it's in German, of course. And then um, Christ is back. <laughs> I go there. We give the cure to all the diseases to the now Pope, who is, uh, goes to work on a bus. And then hangs out all day with God the and stuff. Like. one of us. Well, he is. He goes to work on a bus, rides on a bus, trains, and now... Even his first trip uh, out from the Vatican after yes. he became Pope, he got on the bus he got on the bus instead of the papal, the, papal, the papal limousine or whatever it is that they had. So, Shows up in the last bus. Delightful man. And... Uh, what a character. <laughs> I love him already. Okay, so he uh, he's fully aware that the Christ is back at this reading, and... Uh, all very exciting. Now, here we go. So Jesus was an Essene. His followers knew him as the teacher of righteousness. The Dead Sea Scrolls are in fact a scholar of the time. Okay, we read all that. Today the Antichrist has many faces. The Jews have men in strategic positions set up to snap the opportunities that fall their way. And at the time of this writing, one is Joseph Lieberman, the running mate of Al Gore, an Orthodox Jew. Orthodox Jews practice the Talmud, which is Antichrist, denying Jesus as God in the flesh, and they regard all Christians as goyim, and, they, and, and which they say are Gentiles. Now, look, I'm just going to cut right to the chase here and read parts of the Talmud, because we're talking about it now. This is what the rulers of the world have believed. A lot of you are familiar with this, but a lot of you are not. So there's a reference to the Talmud, and Orthodox Jew believes their holy book is the Talmud. So, uh, let's see, this is the Talmud, the Christ, of course, has read it. What do you think of, of these samples? Just asking you, a Goyim is a Christian or Arab or non-Jew, so in other words, it's everybody. everybody. 
Uh, one, Sanhedrin 59a, murdering Goyim is like killing a wild animal. Uh, Boda Zarak 26b, even the best of the Gentiles should be killed. Sanhedrin 59a, a Goy or Gentile who pries into the law, Talmud, is guilty of death. Four, Libra David 37, to communicate anything to a Goy about our religious relations would be equal to the killing of all Jews. For if the Goyim knew what we teach about them, they would kill us openly. Libra David 37, if a Jew be called upon to explain any part of the rabbinic books, he ought to give only a false explanation. Whoever will violate this order shall be put to death. Yebamos 11b, now I want all of the Christian world including my mother, who is just beside herself at the moment that this could actually be happening, mother and family, all of you who are part of the Protestant war that support the Jew, who has uh, been preaching from your pulpits all of this time, listen to this and just think about Poppy. Little Poppy, she's a... Uh your niece, she recognised me straight up. Right. When <laughs> Poppy was three, she Silly. just straight Silly. away, I love Brian. And of course, I told her who she was, no who he was. So uh, Poppy's, uh, well, she was born in 2005, so she'll be she'll going on age. And, and Poppy is my father reincarnated. However, this is, this is what the ones that are preaching to you from your pulpits, including your Christian schools, that sexual There's intercourse... There's a white man. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm having I'm having a, another you know no mocker and no mocker I haven't had a mocker for about 48 hours. I'm having one, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll see you in the okay, so sexual intercourse with well, a little girl. So yeah. <laughs> sexual intercourse with a little girl is permitted if she is three years of age. Now the world is wondering why Imagine pedophiles that. pedophiles throughout the judicial system, magistrates, oh. judges. It is rampant. It all begins with Philip, the Black Prince, oh. the husband of the Queen Elizabeth, oh, who is the seed of the devil, Winston Churchill. It's all been exposed. She has, has been held captive by her husband, the Black Prince, who practices the Talmud, as do all those in high places throughout the world of the Protestant whore. Just think of the 300-pound syphilis-infested Henry VIII, rotten to the core. That's where the war began. He, to fulfill his sexual lusts. And so the whore is the mother of all 36,000 denominations and lovers and has been pointing the finger at the Catholic Church forever. We're all dead, mate. So unless you come out of the war, that is the Protestant war, you will partake of the sins and the wrath of God against the whore, which is its destruction. I should say in the Vatican and III, righteousness. which uh, Pope Benedict asked me to look at Vatican II, which is a complete abomination, lets the Jews in. It doesn't matter who you believe in, you're going to heaven, right? So, oh, no. The only one to believe in is Jesus Christ, and you ain't going to heaven unless you do. And he's the door now, that's why he said. That's right. Yeah. So, the door uh, to the Father. I said the easiest the way to defeat the beast, you've got 1.2 billion Catholics in all the churches, you start making it so that the health of each person can be treated within the church system. So if you've got a lady across the street who got breast cancer and she's a Protestant, and she goes across the road to the Catholic church, they heal her. Mm. Right? <laughs> That's the end of it. That one act, one person being healed by the Catholic church without getting cut up and uh, butchered and poisoned with chemicals. Uh, or just walk across the street, we'll do it in 10 minutes, right, get done, see you later. So that's the destruction that spread of the whole very quickly. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's, continue. let's continue in this. Jew, Jew, Jews may swear falsely by use of subterfuge wording. Do not say goyim in danger of death. Show no mercy to the goyim. Here's a good one, Gosh and Ham 838815. If it can be proven that someone has given the money of Israelites, so this is the Jews that calls themselves Jews that are not, to the Goyim, so that's to the rest of the world, the Christians, or anybody else, 
A way must be found after prudent consideration to wipe him off the face of the earth. <laughs> Had that been? Oh. So gosh and hand two sixty six one. A Jew may keep anything he finds which belongs to the Akram Gentile. That's why all of your houses are repossessed when you fail to pay the usury or the interest on money that never existed. No bank has loaned anybody any money. It didn't exist. It's black ink on pieces of paper. And they raised the printing of the fiat currency on your signature. And it all goes back to the Jews, according to so and if they can find a way to so steal what you have. Okay. It is praiseworthy, however, to return lost property if it is done to honour the name of God. Namely, if in doing so, Christians will praise the Jews and look upon them as an honourable people. Okay, the book of Jorah, Dia 17. A Jew should and must make a false oath when the Goyim asks if our books contain anything against them. So, that's what you always been saying all along. Ask a Jew anything, and the opposite is true. If they say yes, it's no. And if they say no, it's yes. They so have to is lie. this crazy Australian God or not? <laughs> they will have to say the opposite of what they believe. No. <laughs> Here's another one. The Jews are human beings, but the nations of the world are human, not human beings, but beasts. Julia Gillard, are you listening? You have a Jew in your parliament, standing up there, defending Israel. Hello. When the Messiah comes, every Jew will have 2,800 slaves. No. What say you, Messiah? Well, I don't think they'll have that many in hell, because that's where they're going. Mm. Here's another one. Just Jews. Here's another one. Jehovah created the non-Jew in human form so that the Jew would not have to be served by beasts. The non-Jew is consequently an animal in human form and condemned to serve the Jew day and night. You're working for the Jew. Every dollar that you earn and the taxes that they take you're working for the Jew. All of the interest, the usury, the, you're working for the Jew. That's why you can't get anywhere. Hello. It's all about to be overturned. But it's 310. It's a 310. Hello. Here's another I one. I like 312. Well, let's listen to this one. A Gentile girl who is three years old can be violated. That means sexual rape. The violation is considered a wound and will heal. This is why all of you who do not come out of the hall will partake of the sins of the hall, because behind it all is this, the Talmud. A Jew may violate but not marry a non-Jewish girl. If a goy kills a goy or a Jew, he is responsible. But if a Jew kills a goy, he is not responsible. So they have got away with the terror and murder of millions, including Port Arthur. The massacre was not alone, mentally ill. Six Israeli soldiers shooting. It was Mossad. So... 32 people shot in the head. Yeah. Tourists. So, was the Arche... Yeah, the, the, what happened there, um, there's a fellow which Sinan. I said, look, be careful, uh, and I'll kill you. And he was an ex-army uh, demolition expert that had been hurt and um, put into retirement from the Australian Army. And he was in Fremantle in Perth, near Perth. And he saw the ships come in full of Americans and um, then they, they pulled out and Australian destroyers uh, followed them with uh, Australian people on board. And when they got 500 uh, kilometres off the coast of Aceh, Indonesia, they dropped a nine megaton bomb in a bathysphere to the bottom of the uh, Indian uh, plate and set it off. And that's what caused the tsunami that came in and took out Aceh. Now, Aceh was targeted because that's where most of the opposition to America was. So. No, the, the, the towers, 9-11, they were brought down by Mossad uh, in uh, cahoots with the American government, the, the Bush government at the time. All atrocities. Uh, moon, ho moon, moon hoax, if you look at any of the movies of them on the moon, uh, just do a light spectrum test and you'll find it's mercury vapour. In other words, it's done inside a studio. Mercury vapor was the lamp of the time. America did not go to the moon. 
You can't go there. You get to drive with the Van Allen Van Allen All right, li listen to this. Uh, how to interpret the word robbery. A boy is forbidden to steal, rob, or to take women slaves, etc. From a boy or from a Jew. But a Jew is not forbidden to do all this to a boy. Working for the Jew as a slave man or woman. God has given the Jews power over the possessions and blood of all nations. Power over the possessions and blood of all nations. Is sure, there... well, in words, in wars. Yes. Now, here's another one. Shalkin Aruk Chosnen Hamisblat 156. When a Jew has a Gentile in his clutches, another Jew may go to the same Gentile, lend him money, and in turn deceive him, so that the Gentile shall be ruined. For the property of a Gentile, according to our law, belongs to no one, and the first Jew that passes has full right to seize it. Thanks. A Jew is forbidden to drink from, the gla from a glass of wine which a Gentile has touched, because the touch has made the wine unclean. He who desires that none of his vows made during the year be valid, let him stand at the beginning of the year and declare, every vow which I may make in the future shall be null. His vows are then invalid. This is what is called the kol nidor. Look it up. Here's uh, Nederim 23b. He who desires that none of his vows be made during the year be found, let him stand at the beginning. Uh, well, we just read this one. And so this is why, now this is the part where uh, there's a little bit of revision and revelation going on here. And this is why the Catholic Church because it didn't happen. Is why, okay. I'll read what's written and then we'll bring in the correction. This is why the Catholic Church murdered the Jews and is why this added to the protocols by the time of Hitler, a Christian, set himself up as judge and jury of all Jews, regardless of the fact most Jews have no idea what these are or what they contain. This is why I say I'm here to liberate the Jews. Now, correction. Hitler, yes, he rounded up the Jews because he knew that the Jew, Judaism, would end with the annihilation of all humankind and the earth itself would end up floating around the ether as a lifeless ball. Now, the world is hearing about war with Iran. That would be a nuclear war, World War III with Iran. This is what they are still trying to bring about. It won't happen. Wars and rumours of wars. Hitler was right. He did round them all up and he put them in camps that were built away from the centre of Germany. Why? To keep them there until the end of his war, which was all about territory, regaining territory that had been stolen through previous wars, and liberating Germans in Poland who were being put to death in the most horrifying fashion, all part of the setup to get him to go into Poland and then England declared war. Churchill was the devil in that with Rothschild behind it. Hitler was a saint. The, the official Red Cross records of all the Jews who died throughout the, the six years of the war were 273,000 and they died mostly of natural causes. That is typhus, which comes from life, and starvation because all of Germany was starvation. Thank you, Hitler. The bodies that were interned by the British bulldozers at the time, they were, they were skinny bodies having starved to death as all of Germany had been starving. If Hitler wanted to wipe out all of the Jews as the Jews, the great big lie, just look up the Harold Wallace Rosenthal interview of 1976, they plainly admit it was a lie. Holocaust is a Jewish word, it's an invention. And there are many, and there are many honorable men who have paid with their reputations for having dug up the truth, the archival history, like David Irving and Ernst Zundel, these men have been taken to court. All of Germany is liberated from the lie and the guilt placed upon them by the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not. It was all a setter. Hitler no, I, himself... I want to see Hitler, Germany go and take over Poland. Yes. Liberate Poland liberate from Poland. the Jews. Um, now, it's a state Hitler, of mind there. It's not a nation anymore. 
Hitler's goal was to round them all up, keep them safe during the war, get, get them out of Berlin. It was Dresden where the Holocaust occurred. Within 20 minutes, 135,000 people had been fried. Thank you, England. Churchill, who was himself a Jew. His expenses for nine years had been paid by the, 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 the Jews who call themselves Jews and not. He was set up. He was their puppet. Hitler want, he wanted no war with England. He wanted to be friends with them. When Churchill turned down the peace agreement, then the bombing began. So you can thank Churchill, who's the devil in the war, World War II, and he is the father, through artificial insemination, of Elizabeth II that occupies the throne of England. It's all whoredom, devils in high places and whoredom, all coming down like a house of cards. Even his famous speeches, we will fight them on the beaches, was done was by an actor. Drunkard. He was drunk by the time it was five o'clock in the afternoon. And he used to entertain people from uh, the parliament and so forth and the allies. Called Orders Naked. of the Bath. In his bath. Orders of the Bath. <laughs> smoking on his fat cigarette, his fat idiot. gutted drunkard. And, and the generals sitting around recording in their private diaries that David Irving was handed because nobody else asked for them and expose the lie of the Holocaust. Now, the Holocaust that really did occur was the 1.5 million Amen. by the young Turks against the Armenians. Start digging deep in that and be horrified. So you've got Turkey today as the Zionist arm, another Zionist tool. They are the perpetrators of one of the, well, the worst Holocaust that has ever occurred. Hitler was a saint. He knew it, and he knew that one day an Englishman would come along and reveal the truth. And that was David Irving. So, the Protestant whore my heroes, was destroyed uh, by truth. Kennedy, Hitler, Bill Cooper, Pope Benedict, and Pope Francis. Yes, these are men of righteousness. Men of honor. So. Now that was that was from the so all of this is uh, I may as well just wrap it up here. Oh, okay, this because I skipped to the end. Um, pick some stuff at the middle. Oh, I, I will. As it is prophecy that the Christ must be born of the family of David, and he will single-handedly make war with the beast, and the world government will be laid upon his shoulders. That's Genesis forty-nine ten through twelve, and Isaiah twenty-two twenty-two, and Isaiah sixty-three one six through one through six. He, the Christ, is being told by God to locate these things and inform the world. Of course, he is God. He's doing it, you know. He it's is a God. duality. A du yes. It's therefore necessary to tr attract a attention and cause those who read his words to deny his me, tactics right? and condemn his there. actions. In doing so, a controversy has begun. I, Brian Lord, I, <laughs> I Brian Lenica, Lightning Marshall, declare before the world and in the name of Jesus and Almighty God, I am the Christ. So that was Melbourne, Australia at 1106. 29 seconds on Friday, April the 13th, 2001. And 11.06 means opinion, resolve, counsel, consent, advise, agree, judgment, mind, purpose, will. And 6.29 in Greek is the Redeemer, redemption, salvation. So that was the end, mm. just to give you an idea of I what it is, the Protestant Hall. No, of course you didn't. <laughs> It's just all angelic, babe. So, what have we got? That's like, what are the other juicy bits here? <laughs> well, it's about the uh, how did the so. All right, we've got the the, the Christ family that were essing. I should say that uh, reincarnation is something that's very very common in the Old Testament, um, and uh, the Essenes talked about it all the time. The Nicodemus, when he was spoken to by Jesus by the Essene account. Talks about uh, reincarnation. So um, coming back to the earth in this way is primarily to get uh, my mother back, which was Mary. So Mary was with me up until uh, approximately ten years ago, and uh, May the uh, the eighteenth, two thousand and three, when she was reconceived into uh, um, my grandchild via Rhiannon and uh, Mary Magdalene, who was Michelle Knight who I um, think I'm quite crazy and uh, covertly work against me. 
Um, but the point is, um, through the most difficult circumstances, I was able to bring forth uh, uh, my mother back for the Catholic Church. Good job. Right on, I thought. <laughs> Ripper. Well done, Alex. <laughs> Eric's, Eric's worried about. He says, I want to come to the Barry Supplement Lab, but I've got all these bills to pay. Oh. <laughs> don't pay them. Uh, uh, he says that. I, I said, I don't think you'll have to worry about that. Oh, good. It's almost over. Really. I felt so afraid for a moment. I always feel like no, I always feel like no one anyway. But I said, I said, all poverty in your life will be overturned. Thank you both so much. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you know, you're the maintenance man for the Vatican. Would you? <laughs> good, good I, told, I told him that before. He's, oh, look, uh, okay. We're still going. We're still. Uh, yeah, we're still so. Oh, all right. We're still recording. I, I, I better tell. Well, right. maintenance man for the Vatican. <laughs> He said, oh. right. <laughs> he said, uh, I don't think he wants a job. Well, well, they've already got a cover, right? <laughs> he said, that sounds like a huge job. I said, well, you have lots of helpers. <laughs> oh, Eric, honey, you're gorgeous. Can't wait for you and Andrea to be together forever and ever. And uh, your, 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 your knight, your, she's the lady in white satin. <laughs> mm. Mm. You're a knight in white satin and she's your lady. If I were a carpenter. <laughs> no. Hey, hey, we could have that plane. Press some. Um, I think it's. Can you go and, and press? It's it's been recorded. See what's there. Just turn it down, and it, it'll be user song. User song number one. Press song. The button song. The button for a song. Is that the one I recorded? <laughs> okay. How do you been from? Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, Joe, can you please help me? Yeah, yeah and then turn the dial till we get to user song number one. I think it's on that one. So I have to turn that one. Yeah. It doesn't make song. sense. If I was a carpenter, oh, you're a lady. Right. In other words, she's got this old bag. And then so it's not a lady. <laughs> right. so I'm if you're one, a lady. Jet set. <laughs> no, that, that's, uh, that, that's uh, another pre recorded one, but mine should be above it, I think. The, the user songs one, three, one, three to five. User song. We've got to get some atmosphere happening here. You realise you've got to go up and down at this point. Oh, I couldn't. Yeah. Mind you, I'm trapped here. Um, now, we watched Sister Act 2 last night, or rather, I fell asleep to it, but the, the music was getting through. Of course, um, Sister Act 1, Sister Act 2. <laughs> rockin' and a rolling. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, we'll ease them into it, right? Hmm? We'll ease them into it. No, I don't have to. Yes. <laughs> As long as it's uh, as long as God enjoys listening to the music, then it's all good. If He doesn't like it, then it won't be allowed, right? Now, Pope Peter the Roman. Yes. All he has to do is sit back and relax. Yes. And do uh, our lovely. This is Benedict Nuna. You probably can't find it. Oh. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. It's all right. It's all right. It was, a, it was another real clever idea. The first one. No. Oh. <laughs> do you want to find it? Then? Just carry on there, don't worry about oh, the oh, 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 right. okay. friction around my face. Right. <laughs> your, your eyebrows, your trimmed eyebrows. You had to mention it, didn't you? <laughs> okay, what are we up to? So we're up to Edom. Okay, so we've got. Uh, what, is the, what is the truth of the word Gentile? Eric, you're going to have to wait till I answer you, huh? <laughs> um, Gentile. Gentile nations were nations not descended from Jacob, but rather descended from the twin brother of Jacob named Esau. Edom is the same man renamed by God after he refused God from Esau to Edom. Jacob accepted God and was rewarded and renamed Jacob Israel, and he became the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Israel then was Jacob, and his offspring became the tribes of twice. 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 Of Israel. <laughs> they became nations as did the sons of Esau or Edom. And we have the Edomites. Ammonites, Edomians, and so on. The Jews today say that they are descended from Jacob, Israel, the son of Judah, and from him all of the prophets who were instructed by God brought forth the Bible. But the Bible is specific in terms of the coming of the Messiah, or Shiloh, Genesis 49.10, 
and Isaiah 63 to name two references. Ooh, what's that one about? That might be something that we need to ask. have a look. What's going on with that? Yeah. Yes, Ashley, you just sent a message, Charlie. Exciting things are happening. I'll, I'll get to your message later because <laughs> I'm recording. That's from Ashley Leonard. She's in Belleville, uh, she, well, uh, Chicago, Illinois, and she's been in contact with, with Brett, um, a, a chiropractor, lovely lady who's just found us recently. And all good. So, um, okay, so the la later prophets were too uncomfortable for the way of the Antichrist Jews. So they dismissed the Bible, selected the first five books only, the books of Moses or the Torah, and this allows them to stay in a solitary religious state. Then they wrote the Talmud and continued adding to it for centuries after Jesus came and died on the cross. They knew that Jesus was the Christ, but would not be back to take the kingdom for 2,000 years. As it is written in the stars, that this will be so. That's why... In the wilderness, the temptation showed all the future kingdoms. He says, well, thanks, but no thanks, you know. It is written, however, it was all about now. He takes the kingdom now. Let the devil build it, and it's a takeover. It's not an election. Election. Yes, no, no, nothing is an election here. We're telling you the way it is. If you don't like it, then you're going to be very disappointed. <laughs> okay, so the Jews opted to rise up against the Essene community as they had made an alliance with Rome and took advantage of the good life after the true followers of the Bible moved from Jerusalem in 153 BC. So this is all before the cross. The Jews by the time of Herod were Pharisee and Sadducee, not true Jews, evolved from Idumean Gentile half-breed Jews, which had formed an alliance with Rome after Rome had conquered Palestine and Herodian kings installed, ruling with the fear of death. Half-breed Jews sounds like cows, doesn't it? <laughs> Living the part that is Jew, got nothing to do with me. No. This thing. Mm. This thing is the oldest religion. It goes back way before the end. Well, it was the. Uh, it's all from Adam. Everything. Mm -hmm. It was the waveform from Adam. In Adam's, in Adam's sorrow, uh, there were established ways of worship that became tradition down through the righteous. Righteous only, not. Um... Okay, therefore, inspired by God, the Essene Jews left Jerusalem as a priestly group to the devil, the Idumean Jews from 153 BC. So they pulled out of there. 153 BC was left to the devil, who were the Idumean Jews. Romans. Okay. This did not mean that all Jews of a righteous nature left Jerusalem. Many stayed on within the general population, and many priests were secretly Essene in fact or inclination meaning they either practice the way or the inclination of their heart was. That's why it's written on their hearts. Let us look then at what happened and expose the great conspiracy. The, tw the twelve tribes, <laughs> twelve tribes <laughs> of Israel, Jacob renamed Israel by God, his sons became tribes, lived to the north of Jerusalem. The evil Jews were within the priestly royal tribe of Judah, the fifth son. King David and all of the prophets were born of the fifth son of Jacob, Israel, the royal line of David and the priests who brought the word of God to mankind, the Bible. Benjamin, the youngest of the twelve boys, also became a tribe and his territory was a territory given to the young son of Jacob, Israel. His territory is where Jerusalem was built and where it is today. The royal line of David and the prophets who delivered the word of God to the kings also dwelled in Jerusalem. But the ten northern tribes of Israel were very powerful and were split from Judah, weakening Israel. Wars were fought, fought between the ten tribes and their neighbours until they were finally defeated by the Assyrian kingdom in 722 BC, captured and taken to Nineveh in Babylonia. This was a death sentence, but God spoke to the prophet Jonah, ordering him to go to the Assyrian king and demand the release of the ten tribes. No, it's not God speaking, it's one of his actions. Mm. No one has spoke to God. Yeah. God gets his messengers to speak to everybody. So, uh, yeah, it, it's the angels. Now, Jonah wanted no part of it. 
and in terror headed for Spain on a boat. God, however, had a situation develop and Jonah was to find himself overboard and in hell for three days, hell being the whale story. Jonah was saved and reinvigorated, obeyed God and boldly entered Nineveh, demanded the king release the ten tribes, and the king did. As it is history and the ten tribes were spared and scattered, the Jews have made concerted efforts to dissuade Christian nations that this is a myth. Jews have relentlessly and covertly waged war against Christianity. Jews generally occupy universities and scholarly positions and get away with force-feeding Christians that the truth is that they, the Jews, are the chosen people fostering the notion that Jesus was not the Messiah. The Jewish subversions plot can achieve their goals simply because the victim of this war has been prepared by Christianity to be tolerant and of love as taught by Jesus. The Freemason cult being the offspring of the Jews aid in the historic denial that the ten tribes of Israel ever emigrated towards Europe. This is because it is contrary to the, to the god of Freemasonry as their god is the Egyptian gods Osiris and Isis. These truths are so ancient that today seem unlikely as it is above the comprehension of Christians generally speaking and are also further deluded by the countless Christian churches who have their own hidden agenda. This would be the or, the Protestant or. Freemason Bible. Yes. In fact, atheists make better researches of physical truths of origin as they are generally not influenced towards the Jewish agenda. The facts reveal by language how these tribes regrouped as they moved from the Middle East migrating to Northern Europe, and we find today that the European nations still maintain the insignia and emblems of the Ten Tribes. So now we have to look at what happened to the royal family of Judah. After 722 BC, Judah remained in Jerusalem in the territory of Benjamin. The Ten Tribes were gone. The royal line and the prophets being of the tribe of Judah became Judah Israel, or more specifically, Judah Jacob Israel. The prophecies of God state that the throne of David would be everlasting, and so it continued in Jerusalem. In 586 BC, the king of Judah, Jacob Israel, Zedekiah, was warned by God by the mouth of Jeremiah the prophet that he must submit to Nebuchadnezzar. The king refused and made an alliance with the Pharaoh king of Egypt to come to his aid. Building, building rebuilding the Asherah. the Asherah poles around the altars to Asherah and Yahweh, which was the original religion in Palestine. In Palestine. And Moses, he never went into Palestine at all. No. He wouldn't take, after 40 years, he wouldn't take the tribes, this, this is the tribes of Israel, after wandering the desert for that time, he still wouldn't take men. Mm. He said they wouldn't go in. That's right. Then the next verse, they do go in. It's a sudden switch. And <laughs> out. He's dead, right? Next thing he's charged suddenly, across. So his dead. words are that no, they won't go in because of their rebellion and this, that, and the other. And the next verse, it's a sudden switch. Suddenly they're going in. You know, it's called rewriting the script. All right. So the king refused and made alliance with the Pharaoh king of Egypt to come to his aid. The Chaldean king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, cut off the Egyptian army and destroyed it. Then he besieged Jerusalem and waited until the city starved and fell. Hello, I just talked about, you know, starving cities, Churchill, England, the Irish famine, the famine of India. This is the British Empire. That's what England does. They starve. It's all Babylonian. All right, so Zedekiah. Six, 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 seven, the number in the Hebrew concordance. Jeremiah was in fact the grandfather of Zedekiah. Jeremiah and his re remaining priests, along with Burke, scribe, Burke, the scribe, yeah, you've got Birch. <laughs> Burke, the scribe, removed the temple. With him, <laughs> the temporal implements and King Zedekiah's two daughters from Jerusalem, escorting the royal line to Tara Island in 583 BC. The vacuum was filled by Edomian half-breed Jews who installed their own king in an effort to continue in the footsteps of the true line of kings and finally made an alliance with Rome and from this union 
had the Pharisees and the Herod line of cruel murderers as kings. At the same time, the true kingdom of Judah was in Ireland and continued for the next 1400 years when God caused the royal line to be transferred to Scotland. In 1066, the Norman King William the Conqueror defeated England in a bloody war, but was unable to subdue Scotland. In Scottish kings, therefore, were the direct descendants of the kings of Judah, and where the kings were was the tribe of Judah. Ireland and Scotland are Judah. King William I, the line of Scotland, was the 66th king of the Irish-Scottish line of kings, that is, from father to son. He was born in 1143 on December the 4th and died in 1215 on the same day, December the 4th. This is a sign. He had several children. His three sons were Alexander by Elmigard, his first wife, and Robert de London, and Henry go lightly by Isabel Avenel, his second wife. She the most royal woman in Europe. Her lineage is of the Norman kings and the English kings. Alexander II became King of Scotland. He was succeeded by his son, Alexander III. 1157, Malcolm IV, grandson of David, gave up, grandson of David I? Uh, David, the brother of uh, King William. Okay. Gave up the claims of the Scottish kings to Northumberland and Cumberland. Attempting forcibly to renew the claim to Northumberland, William the Lion, brother of Malcolm IV, was taken prisoner at Alnwick and obtained his freedom only by acknowledging the overlordship of the King of England in the Treaty well, of Alnwick. two daughters have been kidnapped. <clears throat> so the, the English were going to kill him unless he gave up. So he gave up. So he did it for the love of his two daughters. And they wives. married marshals, by the way. Yeah. In 1159, to obtain money for his crusade, Richard I sold back to William the line, the rights which he had surrendered at Falais. In 1240, Alexander II died at Carrera near Oban on an expedition to subdue the chiefs of the Western Isles. 1263, to defeat the Scottish attempt to detach the Western Isles from Norway, Hakon of Norway intended to invade the central lowland. Although the Norwegians beat off an attack on their ships at Largs, they could not operate on land in the presence of the Scottish army and withdrew to Orkney, where Hakon died. 1266, King Eric of Norway ceded their Hebrides to Scotland for a money payment. 1286, Alexander III was thrown from his horse and killed, leaving a child as his heir, Margaret, called the Maid of Norway, daughter of Eric of Norway and Alexander's daughter, Margaret. He wasn't the father of, of, of that girl. No. <clears throat> she was just one that uh, considered <clears throat> would be a good queen. Mm. She didn't make it either. No, she died on the way mm. in 1290. I killed her. Yeah. In 1296, there were 13 men it's gathered to claim the throne, known as the competitors. Okay, so the War of Independence, the work of David I and his successors the consolidation of their control over their kingdom within its natural boundaries was put to its supreme test in the War of Independence. The career of Wallace showed that by itself patriotism could not save Scotland, but patriotism was weaker than the Bruce Balliol feud, which brought now one party, now the other, into the field on the side of England. That feud, however, after Balliol had his chance and failed, provided a rival leader for the national cause perhaps the greatest Scottish soldier, who gathered into his hands the resources of his kingdom and employed them to win freedom for his country. In 1290, by the Treaty of Burgham, the Scots agreed to the proposal of Edward I of England that their queen should marry his eldest son, Edward. This scheme for the union of the two countries came under one crown was frustrated by the death of the Maid of Norway. She murdered. 1292, as arbiter between the competitors who claimed the succession to the throne, Edward I exacted an acknowledgement of his supremacy, then gave judgment in favour of John Balliol, through, though by Scottish custom, Robert Bruce had probably the better right. King John was therefore crowned as the vassal of England. 1296, when humiliated by his overlord, King John renounced his allegiance Edward stormed Berwick, defeated the Scots at Dunbar, and marched through Scotland to Elgin, receiving King John, John's abdication at 
straw cathro near Drekin. 1297, in spring, the whole country except Lothian was again in arms, and in September, Wallace and Andrew de Moray defeated Warren and Cressingham at Stirling Bridge. He lived on Stirling Drive, of mm -hmm. yeah. 1298, in spite of Edward's defeat of Wallace at Falkirk, the Scots continued resistance. Among their leaders were Robert Bruce, the grandson of the competitor, and Balliol's nephew, the Red Common. 1304, the capture of Stirling Castle completed Edward's conquest of Scotland. 1305, Wallace was taken by the English and executed. 1306, Bruce quarrelled with the Red Common, who had inherited Balliol's claim to the throne and murdered him at Dumfries. This precipitated into a revolt against Edward. King Robert was hastily crowned at Scone, then defeated at Methven and hunted across the Highlands. The true king was Patrick Golightly, as Robert de London died without children, and Henry's line was the last remaining direct link to King David by William I. Back to the first queen of Ireland, the daughter of Zedekiah, the last king of Jerusalem, and he descended directly from King David, and David from Jacob Israel, he from Isaac, Abraham, Seth, and Adam, and therefore... What died. happened while these others were killing each other off? Yeah. Uh, the Goliath line is just stick in fact, that's why the, the lion, King William the Lion, invented the name, Go Lightly. Keep away from it. Throne. So we just Shh. protected the genetics of the Goliath from King William, and that line goes right up across to the kings of Jerusalem and back as far as the original Adam. That's right. Now, of course, the Jesus bloodline comes through Nathan, not Solomon. Solomon was a black witch, evil, evil, evil. And this is what the current Queen of England, who is a complete counterfeit, um, claims uh, her heritage to be from well, Solomon. What's interesting, we've got John swearing to the Pope in uh, 1215. 1215. 1213. 1213 on May the 15th. Yeah. So the Pope still has the power to nominate who is going to be King of England. Mm. Right? Mm. That's why the Queen has to go and bow to the Pope to this day. Mm. Right? So the new Pope says, right, you're out of here. She's already been served by myself, therefore get off the throne. And it's been proven now through the research of what's his name, Hallett, mm. that uh, it's all it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all Rothschild seed. Okay. Now, um, so the argument as to who would be king was settled by Edward I of England, who named Jan John Balliol as king of Scotland. Robert Bruce, his second Coconut cousin, juice. <laughs> waged war against the king, taking the throne by force. He was allied with the Knights, Tem Knights Templars, and they were of the opinion that he was of the Fisher King genetic line as William. The Fisher line of kings was a mythical royal line descended from Jesus, who they say did not die on the cross, but survived the crucifixion and married Mary Magdalene and had children, become the line to the Fisher kings. It's all a myth. And so this opens the thought to the legends of the Holy Grail being to some the genetic line of Jesus. Wow. Holy Grail, Holy Blood, that's what that's been. Mm. There's a lot of rubbish. Yeah. All right, because the truth royal line was hidden. Right? That's right. It was Martha. <laughs> okay. Then we've got some uh, genetics. Matilda Huntington, son of William the Lion, King of Scots, married Isabel de Avenue, daughter of Richard Avenel, and mother Sybil. Children of King William of Scotland and Isabel Avenel, pedigree daughter Isabel, Princess of Scots, Robert de London, who died as a child, and son Henry Go Lightly. Try and find that on the internet, that's been taken down. Yeah. We see then that the true royal male heir after the death of Alexander III was the son of King William I, the lion Scotland grandson by the king's son Henry Go Lightly, in his grandson Patrick Go Lightly, who was one of the 13 competitors in 1290. This male line exists today, and no matter what has occurred since then, it is a matter of who is the true royal genetically. In ancient times only, first cousins married. That is according to God's law. The Golightly pedigree family tree is few in numbers, and by 1900, the first Golightly to arrive in Australia was Francis Golightly. Francis Aloysius Golightly. Hello, our two popes. <laughs> His wife was Mary Harris, 
descended from England's Henry III. Margaret Scotland, the daughter of William the well, I First. Actually, it goes a little bit further than that. Um, the Habsburgs went to England in 847 AD and then to uh, uh, keep a low profile, they named themselves from Habsburgs to Harrison. Mm. And that goes down to my grandmother. Mm. Mary Harrison. Mm. Mm. So that's why they're still married to one of ones. Yes. Okay, so Margaret Scotland, the daughter of King William I of Scotland and Ermagard, his first wife, married a lord, a, the Baron Fitz, Fitzgilbert Marshall. Here is the Marshall tree. Isabel, Countess of Pembroke de Clare, female, birth 1172, death 1220, spouse William, the third Earl of Pembroke, Marshall, parents Richard Strongbow Fitzgerald Clare, Eva of Leinster, McMurrow, Isabel, Countess of Pembroke de Clare, female, birth 1172, death 1220, spouse William III, Earl of Pembroke, the, uh, Marshal of Fitzgilbert Clare, parents Richard Strongbow, no, okay. That's trading fine. in ships and moving coal around um, the SS Pembroke, which was later commanded by Lieutenant Cook. After they double hulled it and uh, put new hemp sails on and ropes for the mission to study the uh, transition of Venus, June the 3rd, 1769. Um, they renamed it on the same date of the resurrection, uh, that is uh, the 6th of uh, April, I think it was 1768, renamed it the Endeavour to Devour. All the names have these, these uh, satanic names about them, Devour. And um, that was then handed over to Cook. He went on the expedition following the steps of Wallace with a Harrison clock that was able to calculate longitude by invented by John Harrison. And uh, after 50 years of development, um, he won the um, longitude prize. And it was George III that uh, forced the parliament to pay him his 20,000 pounds, which is a fortune in those days, for the development of the Harrison clock, which made England dominant in the South Pacific while being able to accurately um, chart and capture for themselves islands which is included today known as Tahiti. Then they give it to the French for some reason or other. Well, the reason is that in Tahiti, the highest mountain is 7353 feet, and that is the area of the Shroud of Turin. The uh, actual um, size of Tahiti when they measured it in a square is the same number for um, in nautical miles, square miles, is the same number as Gabriel, and uh, also Cook found a um, eleven-tiered pyramid, which uh, was half as big as a football field, and um, I think it was eighty-seven by one hundred sixty-seven feet. But the number was two, uh, three, two, two, nine square feet, and that's the age difference between Golightly, my grandfather, and myself. So they went back and destroyed it. Now, can you imagine if you got an eleven-tiered pyramid half as big as a football field? They sailed all the way from England to dismantle it. There was something there that they didn't want the world to see. But the unfortunately, long comes a, long a little comes, black duck. Little black duck. <laughs> so Cook and his uh, adventure went down to to um, Tahiti to study the transition of Venus. Then opened secret orders saying that he had to find an alternative to Australia, and he sailed south to Antarctica. And on the way back, he sighted a comet, and that comet was the uh, 30th of August, uh, 17. 69, and if you add 88888 days to that, you get my birthday in uh, 2013. 70 Hebrew years or 69 English years, Gregorian calendar, and 8.8888 um, years back from that was the birth of the mother of Jesus, Jeshu Maria, which is uh, why the Catholic Church venerates uh, the mother of Jesus. She has been reincarnated. And that's what my task was to do, to get the mother back. Now, uh, she automatically knew that, as did her sister, who was my mother 
when a little child, she walked up to me and she said, this is Alaska, she said, I used to be your mother. A little baby girl walks up and tells me that. And I never mentioned anything to her or what I was doing or who I was. Um, just as she spontaneously said that. And my mother, Daphne Golightly, had died. Um, and uh, if she hadn't have lived, she would have been 88.8 .8 years old when Alaska was born. <laughs> the 11th of August, 2001. That lined up with the 11th of August, 1999, the last solar eclipse of the millennium. But also, uh, the 11th of August was when I left uh, 105 Rothschild Avenue uh, in Sydney, when my parents moved to um, 3 Old Botany Road, Mascot. And I was 942 days old um, on that date, which turns out later on in 2001 to be Alaska's birthday. Carry on. Well, I'm just going through the, the pedigree here of... Uh, Me? Yes, this is your pedigree. This is amazing. Uh, well, the, the Marshall, this is William Marshall, so... Um, Earl of Pembroke. The Earl of Pembroke, yes. Isabel declared her spouse was William the first Marshall. Marshall. Parents William Richard Strongbow of Dubiac. Okay. Yeah. Well, they were well, well, married first cousins, you see, so... Uh, yeah, so that's all the pedigree there, down to... Well, uh, pedigree, it's all the links for the pedigree. We see that Robert Bruce became King of Scotland by genetically descending from King William I. The line via the union between Marshall, Fitzgilbert, Clare and Margaret Scotland. So it, it, it's got it all covered. <laughs> Both well, Margaret sides. Scotland, that's the name of uh, the daughter, the eldest daughter, mm. of King William the Lion of Scotland. That's right. But Scotland was her name. Yes. The Scotia land. Scotia, yeah. And these are the girls that were brought from uh, Zedekiah after uh, a battle uh, by Nebuchadnezzar that finally took uh, Jerusalem. And in 586 BC, then three years later, Jeremiah took the girls to, uh, to Egypt first and then uh, sailed to Scotland, and where they uh, established the line of kings from uh, the true line of Judah. Uh, to the Irish line that had been there since uh, 1521. During the Exodus, the half of Judah had split and gone to Ireland. That's where the Irish line of kings come from. So um, these joined the two together, the branch. And uh, at that time, um, the Ark of the Covenant was uh, placed in a grotto under, they went outside the walls, but several hundred meters back away from, at night, from the entrenchment of uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And then they uh, moved the Ark of the Covenant and several uh, implements of the temple into the grotto and then they sealed it up. This was discovered by uh, Ron R.O.M. Wyatt. He was a man, uh, some say he was a Seventh-day Adventist, but he wasn't. Um, he was just a, uh, a man, he had a photographic memory and um, he had memorized the Bible and he was able to uh, discern that the um, Jeremiah's grotto was where the Ark of the Covenant had to be. That's directly under the uh, crucifixion upright which was placed into a uh, post hole dug in the rock and during the uh, uh, crucifixion when the spear was placed in the side, the blood ran out on the left side, shredded to ring its, its backwards. They're, they're misreading it. They're misreading it. It's on the outside. Mm. The imprint is on the outside of the shredded to ring, not the inside of the shredded to ring. Mm. So as the force of light burnt the image into the outside. So turn it over and you got it right. That's why they, look, they think it's on the right side of the spear when it's not. However, uh, this... Uh, series of miracles then links us back, Shraddha Turin goes right back and we see the same numbers in the heights of the mountain in Tahiti and that's what it's all about. Now they probably had a fair idea that the um, uh, numbers of the earth uh, would reveal Jesus Christ at second coming. What they were concerned about was the transition of Venus across the face of uh, the sun on the 3rd of uh, June 1769 
waiting for Jesus to show up. Well, he didn't show up, did he? So this is Venus, the morning star. Now in the King James Bible, they've changed the morning star to sun of the morning, and that makes it Lucifer. Right? I think it's um, was it Isaiah uh, 12, 14 or 14, 12, one of them. But uh, the number for Lucifer is 1966, and that's the year I married Lucifer's choice, the harlot from Mithka. So I read these things like a book. I knew what to do. Mary was in, with me at the time. Um, she would nudge me to do righteous things where I could easily have, have gone the wrong way, chasing some gorgeous tart. But I didn't because uh, Mary was there giving me a nudge not to do it. So there was many opportunities where I could have went off with other women. I didn't. I ended up having to marry the one I hated. And that was the Hosea prophecy, Mary Ahala. That's what it's all about. Okay, so this marvellous genealogy is here. Uh, we see that Robert Bruce became King of Scotland by genetically descending from King William I, the lion by the union between Marshall, Fitzgilbert Clare, and Margaret Scotland. This family name also immigrated to Australia, and on February 11th, 1909, a Reginald Marshall was born his mother of the Irish line of kings, Maloney, who married Daphne Golightly, born to Francis Aloysius Golightly and Mary Harris, July 20th, 1934. These two families are first cousin royal families of the highest genetic line from King David, king of Israel. If this union were Jewish families, the Israeli Jews would be posting it on banner ads on every computer hooked to the web worldwide and in every newspaper worldwide. But as they are not true Jews and are of the devil, the genetics of Cain, we shall forbid trust. Or it, could it be that among all of this deceit, the elders of Zion and their servants, the Freemason line from Pharaoh, after gaining control of every facet of Christian life, and the entire business world is set to be utterly destroyed by Christ, a man born of this family tree, the true king of Israel. You know, you know, I saw Mary as a child, she looked very German. Could have been Argentinian as well. <laughs> well, she had that olive tanned complexion, didn't she? <laughs> God has prepared and maintained the true most royal line of Jacob and the Davidic line as prophesied by the prophets. All throughout time, evil men have dominated world cultures and as it was, as it was at the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, as foretold by the Bible prophets. For some reason, the king of Jerusalem in 2 BC, Herod, had no idea that the Son of God was to be born. He was made aware of this fact by the Magi, who came from the east and told him of the star. Herod consulted his Pharisee priests, who looked at the prophecies of ancient times, and they informed him that it was predicted. Herod ordered the death of every male child to the age of two years. His ruthlessness is of the same genetics of his family tree, descended from the devil, as mentioned by Jesus, when he accused the Pharisees that they were the children of the devil, the murderer Cain, as seen in the New Testament at John 8, 44. Now, I read at the beginning of this presentation where this leads us to, and that was uh, the Talmud, the present-day Jewish Bible. So I hope all of those watching this of the Protestant war that you are truly horrified, you should be. Are you recording this? I am. <laughs> and Some I'm of these things we go on for hours and find we're not recording. <laughs> yes, like I did this morning. I already read through a lot of this. Okay, later Gators, a joyous day. Our two wonderful, humble folks, pontiffs, his holinesses. <laughs> Remember I said it starts with Peter and it ends with and Peter. That's why Peter the Roman is his new name of his holiness, Benedict. Because he's no longer the Pope. He's now the Pope of Vatican itself. Right. Okay. It's all good for the good. Love to all Gators.